Uh, some of the companies I've recommended so far have been companies such as Avalon Rare Metals, which has done incredibly well so far, from $0.40 cents to, a, to as high as $4, and down here to $1.35 to, sorry, $2.35 to $2.50. Um, at these levels, it's looking quite interesting because the valuation is starting to show up. The value play is starting to show back up again. This is the type of company that I think it's almost impossible not to be a producer down the road. They are doing everything right in terms of bringing the native groups on side, getting the environmental done, getting all the, uh, the impact assessments done. They're basically going through the motions to turn this into a producer, and I'm, I basically see this as a $15 stock down the road. There are other companies in the state. Great Western Minerals is a in a similar situation, but hasn't had quite as much press because they haven't been going that way. They've been securing uh, supply con- or demand contracts rather from them uh, with some auto companies and trying to work on that. So they've been working a different angle, and I think will be very, very valuable. But they, in their own right, have done quite well, going from around eight to ten cents to forty to fifty cents. So these companies have done very well, and I think will uh, continue to do well. Uh, going forward, we all, we have to be very careful, though, and this is to also note that we have to be very careful with regards to the rare earth mania that's going to occur. A lot of companies are going to show up with rare earth projects and try to say we're a rare earth company, and that's going to be very difficult to to decipher because you can rare earths are very common on the on the earth's surface. But finding an economic deposit is going to be difficult. So if you see a news release of a company saying, oh, we've got these rare earth numbers, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, that the company's going to be able to do anything with it. That could very well be that the company is just using that to, you know, try and boost the stock price, quite frankly. And that's what happened in the uranium boom. A lot of companies were in there just to throw the word uranium in their, in their press release and get the extra dollar or two in their share price. So, I mentioned a company as well the other day, uh, which was uh, Three Gold Resources. They also uh, showed some uh, some rare earth numbers. But the thing about this company that I like is the president did his master's in rare earth. So you know that the guys running this really understand their stuff in rare earth. So that will continue. But we want to find the next mania. We want to find the next thing that's going to move. And... I mean, we've looked at lithium, we've all seen lithium, and it's done quite well. But there's nothing particularly interesting in terms of, of uh, about lithium. Quite frankly, lithium is quite common. And the supply and demand situation for lithium isn't going to change very much or going to do anything particularly interesting. The thing that's going to be really interesting is vanadium. This is something that nobody's talking about yet, and that's generally in the space you want to be in. Vanadium has a very interesting green application. And it's one that I think has been very much overlooked by the mainstream media, but it's going to be quintessential in all of this. Lithium batteries re- release their energy at a, at a slow and steady pace. Our laptops have a three-hour battery life or a two-hour battery life, and they are good through the entire life of the battery. That's the application and the lot of life lithium has. But we're going to need something else that does something quite different. If you have an entire grid, let's say Dallas, Texas, or you know, a big, big place that is entirely powered by green energy, be it wind, be it solar, and you have measures in place to store excess capacity in case of a power failure, you're going to need a way to disperse the excess capacity to the grid in a major shock to restart it. Because in the event of a power out, you're going to have to restart the grid somehow with new electricity, and if you've got stored power in a vanadium battery, it does exactly that. Vanadium batteries have the ability to discharge their entire charge in, in an instant. So this way, it can give that kickstart that, uh, that would be needed for something like that. And that's going to be important when we come to a point where we're getting larger and larger amounts of our electricity uh, generated via green power and not so much as an as an extra, as it is right now. I mean, green power is mainly supplementary as um, supplementary to the non-renewable energies. When that dynamic changes, we're going to need the ability to have the power at our fingertips. Vanadium is going to play an important role. Appella Resources has been something I've been really talking about 
and this one is in Quebec. And the major reason for this is because, um, and the major reason why I like it, rather, is because it has one of the largest, if not the largest, vanadium deposit in the world. These guys control most of it. Part of the reason why the stock price has been down for so long is because they got in a, there was a small legal battle between them and the state-owned uh, company from Quebec who claimed that they staked it before Appella. Well, the courts have been deciding and have already decided on the majority of the claims that Appella, in fact, staked them first. So once the courts decide that, and I suspect that the courts will decide that the rest of the claims actually belong to Appella, the price of this company will appreciate very substantially because, I mean, for a long time it's been viewed as a risky company because, you know, they could have, in theory, lost the claims. A lot of that risk has been taken out by the majority of the claims being signed to Appella already. So they're going to do very well going forward and is certainly one of my top vanadium picks. The Green Dollar Report can be found at greendollarreport.com and it is a free newsletter. At the moment, I'm not going to try and twist people's arms to try and pay for a newsletter in which some people don't even necessarily believe that this movement is completely for real or that you can make money in it. After all, a lot of people believe that you buy a hybrid vehicle and recycle to feel warm and fuzzy about the environment, not to necessarily get ahead financially. I mean, you have to spend more to buy a hybrid, and you got to spend more time to, you know, separate your trash. I'm trying to prove here that you can make money by doing the right thing, by going green. So for now and, for, and going forward for the single future, this is a free newsletter. So enjoy it at thegreendollarreport.com. Thank you very much.